have Uno X got enough? 500 meters to go. Is Pierre Latour going to get it on the line? It's a furious sprint. Latour is caught. Here goes Soren Varenskold. Soren Varenskold all the way to the line. He was the favorite. Varenskold takes it for Uno X Mobility. There was double delight for Soren Varenskold yesterday as he stormed to the stage win and snatched the overall lead of the Alula Tour. The Norwegian will be looking to keep hold of the green jersey today on another sprint day to the Alula Camel Cup track, a rather unusual finish, but they will at least be staying on tarmac instead of trying to plough through the sand. We didn't get so much time to celebrate because we tried to focus on today, but of course it was a, it was a good vibe in the team and uh, yeah, it was really good to just, um, yeah, just a big relief. We can just relax a little bit more even though we have to try again today. So I think it's good for the morale in the team and uh, yeah, it's nice. Things haven't gone Dylan Hrunewagen's way so far, but despite some struggles with illness yesterday, he is still hopeful of getting a win for Jaco Alula. Yeah, I throw up a few times, so I don't know, maybe I eat something wrong or I don't know, but um, yeah, I had a really good night, uh, 11 hours sleep, so um, yeah, I feel a bit better today, a bit empty, but um, yeah, we give it all and then we just see the result in the end. We already had a surprise on day one with Kasper van Uden taking victory. And as Arvid de Klein points out, the weather gods could get involved in today's action. I think we will see echelons today. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so it will be a hard race today, hectic. And uh, yeah, we will see uh, how many guys will make it to the final. 170.5 kilometers on the menu in this third stage, heading from the Alula International Airport to the Camel Cup track. The finishing circuit is seven kilometers long and there'll be a bonus sprint as they cross the line for the first time. With much cooler conditions and more wind forecast, there's also a good chance of echelons in the final. And like the client said, it'll be interesting to see just how many fast men end up contesting the sprint. There was crosswind chaos from the off today and Rafael Maika was one of the chief victims, the pole finding himself a long way back in a small chase group. A bit further up the road was a second peloton containing the Norwegian champion Frederik de Varsnes and the race's most active rider at Sushi Oka in the orange jersey. Brian Cocker, one of the day's sprint contenders, was also in there with a teammate and so too was Michael Zilard, Arvid de Klein's lead out man. The pace was so high, in fact, that the breakaway was caught by the main peloton with 76 kilometers still to ride. Luis Angel Mate, Polychronos Tortsakis and Yuma Koishi were probably expecting to have a bit longer out at the front. But several teams were clearly keen to put the hammer down, including Movistar, Bahrain Victorious and Sudal Quickstep. The speed oscillating between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour. However, with the wind dropping after a change in direction and not too many major players caught behind, the peloton decided to call a truce. That brief lull encouraged Tortsakis to go back on the attack and after a few minutes, he was joined again by Mate. It didn't take too long for the second peloton to catch up, so the race settled back down into a familiar pattern. Tortsakis and Mate soon had a lead of over two minutes. There wasn't too much to report over the next 30 kilometers or so, although it was interesting to note the increased urgency in the peloton every time they approached a corner. DSM trying to up the tempo before this right-hander, putting around 30 seconds into the two breakaway riders, but no splits this time around. The next key point was another right-hander with 30k remaining, and the big guns were ready to strike. 
and now they'll start to fire and Jaco Alula with the team including Simon Yates are starting to put the hurt on already and the echelons are starting and riders are sprinting for all they are worth just to try and stay in this Alula tour this is the action you want at the beginning of the season this is what desert racing is all about those attacks blowing the race to pieces and the main man to be caught out was the race leader Soren Verenskold, apparently with a terribly timed mechanical. The Norwegian swapped bikes with the teammate but he wasn't happy and eventually had to stop for a bike change. He wouldn't be getting back to the front and he wouldn't be keeping that green jersey. The front peloton of around 40 riders continuing to charge their way towards the Camel Cup track. Berenschgold had gone and so too had Dylan Grunewagen, but there were still plenty of fast men up there, including Van Uden, De Klein, Juan Sebastian Milano and Tim Malia. A couple of the Tudor riders tried to go clear on the final circuit, as did Matthias Norsgaard of Movistar, but to no avail, the surviving sprinters would battle it out for victory. Van Uden opens it up very, very early. Going for the sprints is Luca Metgetz, trying to give a victory for Jaco Alula, but it's Tim Malia. Malia going all the way to the line. Malia celebrates, makes it look very, very easy. Absolutely smokes it. Tim Malia wins for the team of Sudal Quickstep. Nice and easy does the trick. Former Belgian champion Tim Malia taking his first win of the season in some style. malia has been doing quite a bit of cyclocross this winter to tune up his form and it seems to have paid off. The 31-year-old looks supreme as he won comfortably ahead of De Klein and Van Uden. This is his 35th career victory. It was a quite a special finish because also with the wind, uh, open parts and uh, uh, w uh, slightly uphill, uh, so uh, yeah, everything must be uh, must be right in, in the sprint, and uh, I'm happy uh, I did the right things today. I believe it's a, it's the birthday of your son, so that's a, not, not a, a nice gift for him. Yes, yes, I was uh, really motivated today. I didn't want to make a mistake today, and I'm happy I can give the victory uh, for my son's first birthday. Malia beating the Dutch pair of De Klein and Van Uden with Hrunewagen's lead out man Luca Mezgetz taking a creditable fourth place. Milano rounded out the top five. Van Uden recovers the race lead that he held after winning stage one. The young Dutchman is two seconds ahead of Malia with Matteo Sobrero up to third after taking another three seconds at the late bonus sprint. Van Uden is also on top again in the points classification with 30. Malia sneaks ahead of Varenschgold into second. Tortsakis, who has certainly been busy in the past few days, goes into the orange jersey as the race's most active rider. And Van Uden is also the best young rider, 14 seconds clear of his compatriot Rick Plumers and Fred Wright. Friday's fourth stage will be a feast for the eyes as the riders head from Hegra to Mariah, where the sprinters should have their final opportunity of the week. Do join us then, and thanks for watching. <laughs>